Good morning, St. John. This is Pastor Ellsworth Tate. I have two announcements before we begin. Feed More that takes place at St. John Baptist Church has been canceled. Feed More that takes place at St. John Baptist Church has been canceled. Also, you may send your tithes and your offerings through our app, the Tithely app. You can download the app and send your tithes and offerings through the Tithely app to St. John Baptist Church. Also, you can send um, your checks to St. John Baptist Church, 8131 Roxbury Road, Charles City County, Virginia, 230. Let's go to the word of God. Out of Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse, we read, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. It was in the mid 90s when a friend recommended a video of mixed martial arts. The idea seemed exciting. Every single art form was welcome. Karate, Aikido, Jiu Jitsu, Taekwondo, Kung Fu, and people who call themselves bar brawlers or street fighters. It really wasn't about the particular art form as much as it was about who would be best in representing the art form that they were, that, that they were using. It was almost as Jet Li stated in his movie, Fearless, no art form is better than the other. Just people are at different skill levels and the contest reveals their weaknesses as well as their strengths. Anyway, my son and I were very excited when they introduced all of the fighters. Man came to the center of the ring and he took the mic and said, let's get ready to rumble. This was very exciting in the way he said it and the way he spoke it. And certainly as we face this coronavirus, we need to also get ready to rumble. This virus continues to take lives, take the lives of people and make people sick every single day. It seems that the numbers were, were doubling every three or four days and now it seems it's that the numbers double every two days. There are many people who are following the, the advice of the Center for the v Disease Control, and there are others who think that they are invincible. This virus is invisible and insidious. If I could use a boxing analogy, this virus has the world on the ropes. But as 2 Corinthians 4th chapter 8th through 9th verses state, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about the body, in the body, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus be made manifest in our own bodies. Look at this passage. Who do men say the Son of Man is? The disciples answered, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, some say Jeremiah or the prophets. 
Jesus asked, but who do you say that I am? Peter spoke up and said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed are you, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed by flesh and blood, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail or overcome it. What does this have to do with rumbling? I'm glad you asked. If you ask any Christian, how did evil, evil enter the earth you will possibly get an answer, one answer, that evil entered the earth through disobedience in the Garden of Eden. Stay with me. Ask a first century Jew how did evil enter the earth, and you will have three answers. The first answer is disobedience in the Garden of Eden. The second answer would be Genesis, the sixth chapter, one through four, which speaks of rebellious angels that broke off from God and the heavenly hosts, came down to earth to cohabitate with the women of earth and caused and created the Nephrahim that brought evil on the earth. The third reason would be the Tower of Babel. Let's go back to the second reason. The place that the rebellious angels touched down and brought their evil with them was the place called Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is the very same place where Jesus and his disciples are standing when they make this statement, when Jesus makes this statement. Mount Hermon was the place where the angels touched down to bring evil onto the earth. Mount Hermon was also the place that was almost like a portal that brought evil continuously throughout the earth. Mount Hermon was the place where many persons worshipped Baal, the god of the Can Canaanites. Mount Hermon was the place that during the time of Jesus' day was where they worshipped Pan. Mount Hermon was a place that was filled with shrines, to other gods. And Jesus and his disciples stood in the epicenter of evil and said, on this rock where evil is, on this mountain where corruption is, on this place where there's repugnancy at, on this place I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, with this gates of hell, I always felt that hell and having gates would mean that the gates of hell is trying to overcome the church. But one has to have a gate in order to keep things out. In other words, the church is on the offense and the gates of hell will not be able to withstand the church of the living God. No wonder we find in the hymn book, on with Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Jesus came right there on the mountain in the epicenter of, of evil and put Satan and all of the host of hell on notice saying that he was about to tear their kingdom down. Jesus threw down the gauntlet. Jesus took a stand. Jesus called them out. Jesus gave, uh, was defiant. And Jesus said, let's get ready to rumble. It was almost as if he came with the old Shirley Caesar hymn, Satan, I'm going to tear your kingdom down. Jesus came to a place of evil to bring good out of it. Jesus came to a dark place to bring light. Jesus came to a hateful place to bring love. Jesus came to a corrupt place to bring incorruptibility. Jesus came to an impossible place to bring pos possibility. Jesus 
came to a place of tears to bring joy. If Jesus is ready to rumble and his spirit lives in us, then we need to get ready to rumble also. Also, although this virus can be considered evil because it is taking lives and causing many people to be sick and causing the world to slow down. In the midst of this plague, we can bring some good out of it. How? Well, we can realize, like we're realizing right now, that we can worship God in anywhere that we want to. That the church buildings are great, the church buildings are nice, and we need them and we love them. However, we can worship God in spirit and in truth. We can worship God in our living rooms. We can worship God in our cars. We can worship God in the woods. We can worship God any and everywhere that we want to. What other good can we get out of this situation? The person that is sitting across the table with you, maybe you could start talking to them a little bit more and get into a deeper relationship with them. Also, you can take the time to have a little talk with God and rest your fingers from the remote control that controls the television. Also, you can read your Bible from cover to cover. Also, you can do the project that God has placed on your heart and on your mind and you have put on the back burner. Also, you can call somebody the 60 and over and let them know that you love them. Call somebody that's under 60 and under and let them know you love them. Call somebody and let them know that you love them. Out of evil, we can bring good. Out of bad times, we can bring good stuff. Out of times that are negative, we can bring some things that are positive. Jesus leads the way. For he told Satan that he was going to build a church right in the midst of evil. Jesus went on to go to the cross. He was beaten. He was spat on. And he hung on a cross between two thieves. Someone asked the question, what are you doing there, Jesus? In an evil place, in a dirty place, in a place that's meant for criminals. Jesus, I could hear him almost reply that he's trying to get some good out of this situation. I'm opening up a fountain and I'm filling it with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners, that's you and me, can go beneath the flood and lose all of our guilty stains. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. May God bless you and keep the faith.